Hello friends and welcome to BISPtrainings.com My name is Amit and today I am going to give you a very brief overview about workforce planning and how to initialize workforce planning. We are going to prepare a series of videos in which I am going to teach you how to set up workforce planning, customize workforce planning, integrate your workforce planning with the existing planning application and we'll talk about various building blocks and advanced options in workforce planning. In today's session, uh, I'm going to give you a very high level overview about what workforce planning is all about, what, what are the different components of workforce planning and how to initialize workforce planning in an EPM environment. So, as you know, workforce planning is a pre-built, pre-package application uh, with some pre-built functionality. It is designed to simplify your workforce planning activities, workforce planning and budgeting activities, and forecast your related expenses like compensation planning, salary, healthcare expenses. You can actually link your workforce planning application with your existing application and see how your workforce expenses impact your overall budgeting process. For example, you like to see how your total employee expenses, direct and indirect expenses impact your overall financial expenses okay, and operational expenses. How workforce planning different strategies are going to impact your entire organization strategy. So workforce planning all about right people, right skill, putting them to right place at right time. Okay, with minimize the cost. Uh, I'm trying to show you with different charts and different images what exactly workforce planning, uh, what exactly your st uh, stakeholders, business managers, HR manager like to know, what information they like to know from the workforce planning. So naturally they would like to know what is the current and future expenses, predictive expenses across all department or individual department. So if you look at over here how my HR expenses are growing year over year across different departments. Business also like to see the summary information about it. What is your historical expenses? And based on this, how would you plan and forecast our future expenses? So that we make sure uh, our, our HR strategy is in line with entire organization strategy. So this is why I have 550 and 16 and my salary expenses reduced by minus 2.7%. And my benefits are grown by 12.4%. Okay. This is my current statistics. In addition, this business user would also like to know um, your headcount and the salary expenses, the relationship between these two variables. If you look at this, we are trying to evaluate the employee headcount year over year and in addition to the employee expenses. And we find some interesting trend in 2008 and 9. My headcount grown up, but my salary expenses are not grown to the same ratio. So based on the VAT data I have available for 1998 to 2009, I could predict for next few years of data. So my budgeting process will be close to, it won't be 100% accurate, but close to real, um, real numbers. This is another uh, summary dashboard, which your most often your HR manager, your CFO, uh, the decision maker like to know about your organization like what is FT rate, you know, employee expenses per headcount, employee direct and indirect expenses, you know. So across different department or different line of business or maybe more granular or more summary information business like to see about the employees. And this is where the hyper planning comes into picture. Uh, workforce planning uh, is implemented in three steps regardless whatever application you use and hyper planning designed to inline with this workforce planning um, strategy model. If you look at it, it's done in three steps, analyze, align, and act. Analyze is more about like what if scenario. What if some event happen? What could have a consecutive consequences um, to my other elements or events? Like understand where you are, starting point for planning and where you can be. And build your scenario to align the people, plan to business strategies and future scenario based on your historical trend. So the previous slide which I showed you is talked about your historical trend. By keeping the historical trend in mind, we can even plan for the future scenarios. 
so what if scenario hype and planning as a product has plenty of drivers and which allow you to do your what if analysis what if your uh, sell tax are or payroll tax are revised by 10 percent how it is going to impact in your overall financial you know strength so various what if analysis can be driven by different drivers this is what we do under analysis align workforce building you collaborate across the organization to build the plan okay so you have different elements different department they work together to you know, drive your uh, workforce planning needs so maybe you are you are expecting some project in next two months and in order to um, you know uh, in order to execute the product how what is the manpower human resource capital uh, skill resources you need or you can plan and align with your organization strategy share and iterative on headcount demand to increase the accuracy in buying and uh, as i said I'm giving you example in order to meet your future project or business demand what headcount they need what skill set they need what are the expenses associated with them direct and indirect expenses all you like to align and budget and forecast and finally based on this how your business um, users your stakeholder can uh, take decision so the more visibility they have about their focus about the existing expenses and business plan according they can do more accurate budgeting and forecasting so overall we are trying to provide them increased visibility about your uh, workforce expense data we can also compare how our actuals are close to our target or budget um, how my budgeting process has been how accurate my budgeting process has been for last three or four years and so on and you build a various um, driver based on which you can quickly adapt the new changes so hypium planning is also designed to uh, hypium planning workforce planning pre-built application it designed to inline with these three strategies if you talk about a specific to hypium planning workforce planning these are the important bullet points about it uh, it can calculate your current and predictive expenses future budgeting expenses related to workforce like salary compensation benefit taxes and we can also efficiently manage employee transfer functionality uh, transfer functionality is important part of your workforce planning in order to make sure you are optimally utilize your resources uh, in all the context so specifically when business is so dynamic for dynamic organization they would like to make use of their resources to the max and therefore employee transfer functionality is very common and required to have various business logic associated with this hypium planning design efficiently to manage these functionality optimize planning process uh, meet the need of global enterprise uh, we can customize planning process the planning as a hypium planning workforce planning as a pre-built package or framework i can modify this customize in order to make sure that it uh, uh, it meets the current demand and the business needs we have plenty of variables stakeholder through which we can modify the planning process for example we have a dimension member called employees where we have a stake a dimension member called new employees it has a placeholders of 100 employees i can add employee as i need them it gives you the option to have a drill through through which you can have a summary and detailed information Maybe I can see the employee HR expenses for entire organization further drill down to line of business sub line of business to the cost center and how my expenses are impacting the other uh, department or other part of the business. It offers the standard planning and forecasting features which you hype in planning offer and the most exciting feature about hype in workforce planning you can integrate hype in workforce planning with your existing system. Generally, the feed or data comes from Hyperion workforce planning from PeopleSoft or similar HR application. And you can see how this HR expenses are going to impact my other part of my expenses. You know, so if my HR expenses are revised, how it is going to impact my overall budget of the organization. Um, there are two kind of planning process when business uh, plan. To implement workforce planning they have a two point in their mind what is my strategic and operational planning operational workforce planning focuses for a short-term goal from 6 to 18 months of plan process 
they focus on skills capabilities and expenses for the employees uh, related to the employee for next short term goal for 6 to 18 months so operational plan is designed to meet their short term goals based on short term goals we design our strategic planning so where you are where do you want you to take your organization next 5 year what would be your future role you know the different question related to the organization workforce are being handled at a strategic workforce planning so objective of workforce planning is from 3 to 5 years and anticipate skills human manpower roles you know uh, all comes under the human resource boundaries and we can also predict for the future uh, uh, you know expenses and resources skills if you specific to if you talk about a specific hyperion planning workforce planning ship along with some pre built dimension okay so the first dimension of account dimension when you log into your workforce planning for the first time uh, under administration section you can see i already already uh, initialize one sample workforce planning that applications you see there's account dimension which has got some defined member which in turn has got some drivers uh, different kind of driver which actually help you to calculate your salaries compass and benefit taxes isn't it so there are certain assumptions salary assumption tax assumption healthcare assumption merit bonus bonus rates bonus by grade so when you customize your application you have a liberty to you know based on your input the total calculation take place so account is actually an alternate hierarchy of account dimension my this account dimension will in turn in line with my actual account dimension when you integrate with your hyphen workforce plan workforce planning with your actual planning application so it's basically a subset of a common chart of account which is specific to uh, employee related expenses we have a drivers different kind of driver which help to perform calculation okay and we have a member which store the intermediate result and we also have various properties and characteristics related to the employee all this information is available under account dimension and account dimension cd dimension as part of initialization this dimension comes second dimension is called job dimension as you see the job dimension hierarchical view of your structure different roles you have in your organization and then we have an employee dimension this is also one of the cd dimension the so employee dimension contain employees of the organization calculate salary benefit of uh, compensation and related all uh, properties of the employees are stored under employee dimension workforce planning give you option for existing employee and new hires if you look at your uh, employee dimension and job dimension you find over there for example employee dimension has got two element full time and part time and total employee existing employee you can add new employees from your interface by adding dimension member you have placeholder for existing employees isn't it and we have uh, other element called unspecified employee we do have a provision to have a uh, contract uh, employees and other category employee as well in addition this workforce planning ship along with some predefined dimension members mem dimension members data form business rule task is menu and all so as part of your initialization all these diamond all these artifacts come to your system automatically so when you log into your workforce planning application you might see them for example i look at a task list in the task list i could see there task list designed based on different job roles so there are two job roles we have uh, workforce administrator and planner and the intern planner is classified as a power user or you call workforce analysis we do have actions i mean uh, menus task list smart list data form you know these are different artifacts of the application comes as part of the initialization as we proceed further we'll talk about all these uh, artifacts step by step uh, next i'm going to take you how to initialize workforce planning application in first example we are going to initialize workforce planning application as an individual application uh, using epma in subsequent example, I show you various other options available, like initialize your workforce application uh, through classic application interface or adding workforce application as one plant type in your existing application. Let's start with um, creating new workforce planning application. Okay. 
So the first step, as we always do, we create a uh, the schema where my planning artifact and metadata are going to store. So I create a new schema and for the sake of testing, um, I'm going to give an admin privilege to my schema. The actual list of schema and the related privileges are available in your student guide. You can look at this primary. You need a create table, create view, create indexes, update, you know, these privileges you need. I create new schema. Uh, create new user work for the application one then I grant DBA connect and create session privileges to workforce application I would use this schema to initialize my workforce application okay? because we are creating workforce application through EPMA. The step one is to um, create an application from application library. Um, you create new application, file new application, name your application whatever you like to give. I call workforce application to the type of application is planning application. Select the moment you select planning, the entire interface changes. Underline option appear according to planning. I wanted to create all local dimension for now and subsequently I would add the member to the local dimension. Okay, so I define description also. This is a workforce planning application. And in this example, I'm going to keep, keep only one plan type workforce and subsequent example, we create uh, integration of workforce planning application with existing application and create multiple plan type. So my object is just to walk you through with existing artifacts. What artifact comes along with your workforce planning when you initialize it. Um, you define the base time period is 12 months. The starting month is January. I'm assuming it's a calendar year. I can have a fiscal year as well. Okay. And weekly distribution I select 445. Okay. Uh, you can have your own local time period dimension, and local year dimension as well. In this example, I'm going to keep a local dimension called year and I start with 2014 next for 10 years. So for last 2014 and 15, I would have historical data and 16 third quarter onwards, I would have a uh, budget data. You go to next. When you go to next, uh, it asks you to see the dimension. Okay. So as hype in planning application, there are uh, seven predefined dimension like entity. If you look at the dimension type, dimension structure, dimension name, sorry, and so in entity, version, scenario, account, these are all new dimension. However, you can change this to existing dimension which you already import into your metadata into dimension library. So in my dimension library, I've got a couple of anti dimension as well. I have anti dimension. I already have work. Uh, employee dimension entity job year period I can map my existing application so new application to uh, new dimension or I can use and create new dimension I have option to select any one of them in this example I'm going to create new entity dimension version scenario and account so when you create new all the seated dimension member will inherit automatically uh, you take them as a local dimension and the period dimension I'm going to inherit from my workforce period dimension, right? The one which I already uploaded over here. The workforce, a period dimension. I imported this dimension. I would go with alias new. Employee dimension, I would continue with existing employee dimension. As we need more member, we can add up. Uh, one change I'm going to do over here. You see, you have option to create multiple custom dimension and attribute dimension UD and all. In this example, I'm going to create one attribute dimension for employee demographic. In the subsequent session, I'm going to show you how to use employee demographic dimension. Uh, it's an attribute dimension, therefore we need to associate with some base dimension. So employee demographic is a property for employee dimension. Okay, And that's it. Um, seems everything good.
So we start with basic and then we go for advanced options. So it is going to create an application and then I may have some couple of uh, um, errors or warning message. I'll go through each error and going to address them one by one. It takes few seconds to initialize to create application. I can log into my uh, schema meanwhile and check. So it's a workforce application one. I got connected and we'll see do we have any table now create table name from user score underscore tables it's a table underscore name right on there no table exists right so the, the dimension of a workforce has been seeded and therefore uh, all the validation errors or warning message would be appear over here and I click on validate I would find the error message warning so if you look at over here right now I have a warning message pertaining to, um, uh, you know, dimension performance order. I'm going to address this issue. So I just need to change the dimension perform dimension order. Right click and add performance setting, and change the order. I'm going to keep my account dimension followed by entity, um, then followed by scenario version year and period year and period employee dimension mean, keep it at the bottom okay. okay validate once again validation pass and now your application ready to deploy okay. if you want to make further changes to your application you can do this before you actually deploy your application like in chain date format in case you want to make multi consecutive true start here and all right now we are going to make all the default option true active and create only workforce application click finish likewise um, any epm application this application also will submit uh, the creation of this application would be submit as a job i have uh, configured my hyper single instance web server and single application server i don't have option i would select over here planning application under my workforce a shared service project data source does not exist i'm going to create new data source click on this new option and create new data source uh, my underlying data source is oracle i define data source detail i install oracle in my local system so i use localhost you would give a ip address of your server So I'm going to use a schema called workforce workforce application one and the password validate test connection connection pass and then you can proceed connect to Oracle as space database as space is also stored in local machine if you store in distributed installation distributed environment give a IP address of the server uh, colon your port number test connection my ISPS is configured common port, standard port 1423. So I'm going to create outline. That's it. I don't need any other function and click on deploy. Deployment in EPM will submit a job with job ID 145. And I would see uh, the progress of my job is being how the job is being executed. It is done so far 66%. And behind the screen, it would have created a set of tables. When I log in and see the tables are being created, I need to wait for a little more time and I could see the list of tables are created behind the screen in your relation database. Well, you can log into your space and refresh your application. You may see your workforce application would have created. Maybe it takes a few more seconds and then you can find your workforce application over here. So Let's wait for a few seconds and let this step be completed. Once it is done, I have an application listed out over here. And as I see, the application listed out over here. And database will have been created in a few minutes. Right, I could see the set of underlying table has already been created under this. I continue to refresh this 
and I see uh, the workforce planning happening has been deployed successfully. Once it is done, you can log in to your open your application, planning application, refresh it. So newly created workforce planning application would be visible in your application list. Workforce planning application number two. Because this is a pre-built, pre-packaged application, you find pre-built pre dimension structure, like uh, your account dimension, which has got some drivers, system message, system members, different drivers under your workforce, under assumptions, salary drivers, tax drivers, you know, bonus drivers, bonus rates. These are different drivers. So when you calculate your salaries, it will be based on the driver, the value associated with the driver. Right, tax rate assumptions, different kind of tax rates. This is your, this is a kind of, uh, this is an account dimension, which may go along with the standard account dimension. And then you have employees. So if you see employee has got uh, total employee, full time, existing employee, new employee, existing employee is empty. New employee has got some placeholders, hiring employee one two hundred. And then we have no employees, unspecified employee to give a room for employee like contractor and all. We have a job dimension. The job dimension work along with employee dimension to define types of job structure. Right now it is empty. In next example step, we are going to load import job dimension from our HRMS application. And then we have a period year in scenario. Uh, important point to this when you look at the task list, the task is designed to keep three job roles in mind. Initially, as a workforce planning administrator, you set up certain assumptions for that. There are job role associate workforce administrator or administration and planning and workforce analyst. The task list, three task lists are mapped to three different job roles. And then you have predefined data form. They won't open right now because I need to set up the variable value. So if you try to open maintenance, New hire request here. In data form, you try to open. It won't open now. It might ask you to set the value for the variable under the preferences. I go to file new preferences and preference. I need to specify it uh, under user variable. Right. So we continue setting up this application. The first, the next activity we are going to do under this, we'll do the what are set of activities. Uh, workforce planning administrator has to perform. Okay, we continue talking about this in next video as well. For now, I'm going to stop over here. In next example, I'm going to show you how do you configure workforce planning application in your existing planning application. So today, I'm going to stop here. And um, if you have any question, you can write to us, or you can visit our site www.bspsolutions.com. Thanks for joining today's session and. Have a good day ahead.